Hey fiends, it's been a while, and welcome to the 5 Styles Challenge where I rolled up 5 random art styles that will feature everyone's favorite kitty weapons. This video is way overdue, but I promise I have a good excuse. Which brings me to this video's sponsor. Wait, is it a sponsor if it's my product? Helena's Guide to Monster Hunting is a 5e supplement that I've been working on for quite some time now. I didn't really want to slap a bunch of monsters in a book and call it a day. Instead, I hope to make monster encounters more interesting than just XP and gold pinatas. Because monsters are heckin' rad, and you should be able to show off those memories in the form of crafting items, weapons, and pets from their scaly hides. A and also to eat them, because we all did it in our campaigns, and shopping for rations is boring as hell. Anywho, links to the Kickstarter in the description below. Thank you to those that already have backed the campaign. Holy crap, we'll get to that later. Alright, alright, I've stalled enough. So, these rolls were made live on previous streams, which I think I'll do from now on because it's fun. Let's start off with Sonic Speeds My Name Hedgehog. Okay, listen, all artists have their dark and tragic pasts, okay? Mine was being a Sonic fan and creating totally original Do Not Steal Sonic stories when I was like 7. My sister graciously lent her Sega Genesis to me and I was hooked ever since. I also played both Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 on the original Dreamcast. That said, even nostalgia blinders on, Sonic games kinda not so great. But that's not what made the franchise endure so long. It really was the design that kept the blue blur going. Seriously, Yuji Naka tapped into something amazing. The Sonic style in its many iterations has just simple enough shapes for kids to comfortably copy, and heck, I was among them. I decided to go with the first Sonic movie and Sonic Adventure versions for the style challenge because, well, they're my favorites for being absolutely lovable media dumpster fires. I highly recommend checking them out if you haven't already. Alright, gonna bury those wince-worthy childhood memories now. Up next, we covered in the very same stream, Over the Garden Wall. Good lord, if you've not seen Over the Garden Wall and you need a good cartoon to settle into the cozy fall feelings, you can do no better than this short masterwork series. Now, this style has a lot of creators at its helm, but the man pushing its iconic unsettling charm is animator Nick Cross. Cross has a knack for adding just the right amount of detail without overloading it in a simple design. Also, he has a really distinct way of drawing creature eyes and teeth that I love. They often always look surprised with wide oval eyes and picket fence teeth. In my first few passes, I struggled to figure out a good stylized muzzle for the Displacer Beast without going too rat-like. I might have gone a little too far in the dog direction, but uh, at least I got a little close. Oh man, I was so excited when I got this next one. Another contender for a game series near and dear to my heart. Resident Evil. These games are one of the few that will catch you off guard if you're not well acquainted with the series' tonal shifts. Nearly every Resident Evil game starts off in a gritty, serious horror setting, but often abruptly unmasks itself to be a zany action game that actively works to ramp up the absurdity. If the words fighting zombies inside of a giant mechanized Napoleon that comes to life and tries to kill you doesn't tick all of your boxes. I... I just... I, I'm not sure what game will. Maybe maybe a giant vampire lady. A giant vampire lady ticks everybody's boxes. A anyway, uh, these games got iconic style in spades. Namely, their creature designs almost always have a classic arrangement of pointy teeth and mangled fleshy muscle. Giant eyeball weak points are also a good touch, but not as often seen in the more recent games. For this particular take on the Displacer Beast, I pictured an infected cat splitting open like the dogs in RE5 and its whips being similar to the Las Plagas in Resident Evil 4. Overall, a nice, goopy nightmare. I guess we're gonna keep pulling out childhood classics because the next style on the chopping block is none other than legendary animator Don Bluth. In 1979, his departure from Disney only fueled his passion to stick it to the mouse. Bluth produced a number of classics in animation including Secret of Nim, Land Before Time, and An American Tale. Also, I mentioned the Iron Giant on stream, but it turns out that Bluth only helped a little with designing the characters for that movie. And the actual animation credit goes to Richard Baisley. Oops, I'm sure I'm not the only one that gets a bit confused by that. While breaking down the Bluth style for the feline-like Displacer Beast, Bluth tends to draw cats a certain way. Three toes, often with claws visible, 
Lots of hair tufts. And this is odd, chicken-like front limbs. No idea why, but it's just a stylistic choice. Also, for added vintage flair, I added some noise and chromatic displacement to make it look like a VHS-ripped movie still. And I think it turned out kind of cool. Uh, I don't know. But speaking of escaping a giant entity that's devouring all media properties in its limitless mass, our final style is Katamari. Good lord, the Katamari series would be a lot more horrifying if it wasn't for the incredibly saccharine cute designs. Everything in this game has a toy-like simplicity to it, which was partially a product of its limited hardware at the time, but has also just added to its timeless appeal. Beasts and monsters in Katamari have stick-like limbs and blocky bodies that, while harder to recreate in 2D, wasn't all that challenging. So as one final flourish, I decided to make a King of All Cosmos version of the Displacer Beast. And, uh, I'm sorry? I'm sorry I brought this into this world, but I'm not responsible for any amount of therapy that might be needed to undo whatever the King of All Displacement does to a person. Yeah, I think I'm just, I'm just gonna end the episode here. Well, that concludes another five styles. I want to take some time to thank all of the backers that have been so amazing in believing in our project so hard that you obliterated all of our expectations on Kickstarter. Oh my gosh. Uh, wow. Okay. I still can't comprehend it all because it doesn't feel real to me yet. Uh... Also, many thank yous to my patrons who continue to support me even during the dry months and kept me funded while I worked on Heliana's Guide. Uh, this is all very surreal to me. I hope to continue to make content for all you folks to enjoy. And uh, until next time, bye!